Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Jalingo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to shout hallelujah. Like you are rising to a new level in the spirit. Shout hallelujah like some things will never happen in your life again. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is truly my honor to be here. I've been here a number of times, but it is always fresh, always new. I love Jalingo. Amen. And um, please, while standing, I want you to help me. We were so graciously received. I was thinking to myself that if I refuse to go back to Abuja, Jalingo, let me tell you the reason why. It will be that Bishop Foreman and his dear wife were so hospitable, I didn't see a need to go back again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please help me honor his lordship and his lovely wife. Amen. I also want to honor Her Excellency. May God bless you, mommy. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. And for every man of God here, quite a list. I heard um, his lordship just acknowledging them. I honor you, honor you sincerely. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Are we ready for tonight? May I request whether you are inside. I saw so many people outside. Those outside, can you shout a loud hallelujah? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to give us a mighty visitation tonight. Go ahead and pray, cry, ask the Lord for a mighty visitation tonight. Father, give me an encounter by your spirit. Give me an encounter here at Peniel 2024. Let me see you at another level. Let me know you at another level. Empower me at another level. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. In Jesus' name we pray. Our eyes are on you, O oh Lord, even tonight. We're gathered because we love you. We're gathered because we trust your word. We pray, O oh God, that at this conference you will speak to us. Let your word lift us to higher levels in the spirit. Let your word empower us again. Let your word renew and refresh our lives and destinies. And we decree and declare that the glory returns to you for in jesus name we pray god bless you please be gloriously seated be gloriously seated be gloriously seated i believe with all my heart that um peniel has come to become not just a meeting for Jalingo, I, we were discussing this earlier on with his lordship. It's gone beyond a meeting for the Anglican communion. I think God has placed his hand upon this meeting. It has become a convergence that provides renewal and spiritual growth, not just for Jalingo, but the entire northeastern region. I think we should honor the Lord for this great vision. It is clear and it is evident that the hand of God is upon this meeting and that this is no 
uh, walk of the flesh at all. And it's my joy and honor to be bringing us God's word. Let me request that you pay rapt attention. Most times, when we come for meetings like this, it is very easy to be distracted in the midst of the many wonderful activities that happen. And sometimes we can miss out on very, very prophetic moments as the word of God comes. You may have heard me say, and let me repeat myself, that God's method has always been his word. God's method has always been his word. His method to bless his word. His method to change a man's story, his word. His method to lift his word. Even his method to empower his word. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has no ministry except to bring validation to the word of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has no ministry except to bring validation to establish the credence of the word. So if the word of God does not come forth, the power of God has no assignment. It is important for us to know that the administration of God's power, it is with respect to his word, the proceeding word. So when the word of God goes forth, then the power of God derives its function out of the word. If God sends a word for healing, then the power of God to heal goes along with that word. If God brings a word for transformation, then the power of God to empower a man unto transformation is released at the instance of his word. The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So let me ask that you lend me your attention. Like I said earlier on, this is a meeting I believe as God put in the heart of his servant. The intent, among other things, is to empower believers within a territory. Please look up. It matters that believers are transformed and it matters that believers are empowered. Spiritual growth is a function of enlightenment. You can have salvation and yet not grow spiritually. A baby is still alive, but he's not able to do many things because of the state, not the absence of life. The same life an adult has is the same life a baby has, but their potentials are not the same. The difference is growth. So the Bible says an heir, for as long as that heir is a child, he differeth not from a slave. Whether you be become an ineffective believer or a very effective believer, the truth is it is the same eternal life you have received. But you may have heard me say the administration of eternal life is knowledge dependent. The administration of eternal life is knowledge dependent. That means you can be saved, genuinely saved, but if you lack the requisite level of spiritual information that makes for your excelling, you can live a defeated life as a Christian. And yet your salvation is genuine. Is someone learning now? So as you listen to the word, I want you to see yourself transiting in the spirit like a baby growing to become an adult. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, and Jesus increased profound statement you would think because he were the word he would not grow jesus your jesus increased in wisdom in stature and in favor the bible says with god and with men acts chapter 20 and verse 32 the bible says and now i commend you to god brethren now he's speaking to brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace it says which is able to build you up and then when you are built to give you, deliver unto you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. John 1 and verse 3 says, And without him was not anything made that was made. So God's channel has always been his word. Let's get to the word of God. For my session, the Lord placed a number of things in my heart that we're going to be considering all through my session. And um, I believe that it is very critical, especially in light of the theme that God gave for the conference this year. 
Tonight, we're going to be examining the integrity of God's word. The integrity of God's word. I want to teach you by the spirit. We Tonight is a prayer meeting, but it is also a probe. An investigation as to the reliability of God's word. How reliable is God's word? If I depend on the word of God and tie my entire life to his speakings, am I at a loss? Am I at a risk? Can I risk my ministry trusting God's word? Can I risk my health trusting God's word? Can I risk my tomorrow trusting God's word? Can I risk my life trusting God's word? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. The integrity of God's word. I'd like you to read with me if you can see it projected. Is it beautiful? So as many who can see it, let's read it together. Ready? One to read. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, uh -huh, but by every word that proceeded so he's talking about living. He's talking about sustenance. And he's saying that man shall not live by bread alone. I hope you know that this was Jesus communicating with Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, making reference to a scripture. And he said, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Two more scriptures. Matthew chapter 24, please. And verse 35. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. May I request that we read together in concert when we have it projected. I think it is. Ready? One to read. Uh-huh. Please read with me one more time. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Are you ready for one more scripture? Psalm 89 and verse 34. We'll still look at this later on. Psalm 89 and verse 34. Psalm 89, 34. Very profound scripture. Let me request you read one more time, then I'm ready to teach. Ready? One to read. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. One last time. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing. Hallelujah. Believers are mandated according to scripture. The Bible tells us that among the many desires of God towards men is the desire to be trusted. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation, we see people greatly rewarded for trusting God. And we see many people whose lives went the other side simply because of distrust. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God, even when Jesus appeared as God incarnate, he frowned at unbelief every time he saw it. Every time men doubted God in scripture, there was a response, there was a reaction. It seemed as though it was an obsession for God to be trusted. Every time people place their trust and their confidence in him, it, it, it's almost like it put pressure upon him to deliver as touching his integrity. Are we together now? That's a very important word that we'll be considering tonight. But generally speaking, there are two attributes of God that are responsible for building faith in the believer. Not every attribute of God builds faith in the believer. There are two attributes of God essentially. Number one is called his integrity. The first attribute of God that is responsible for building faith and confidence in the believer is called his integrity. Please write that word down. And then the second attribute is called his ability. These two attributes are responsible for building Bible faith in any believer. When you find a believer who is able to believe God for great things, mighty exploits in the kingdom, they have got an understanding of these two attributes of God. And for tonight, we're going to consider the first part, his integrity and his ability. 
we're considering the integrity of God's word. Now, let me say a few things about integrity. You may want to write this down, please. I want to be as simple as possible because my intent is for everyone to understand and to follow. So if you're following, shout a loud amen. amen. The word integrity is a very serious word. I'm glad that we have great leaders here scattered across faith and government. And when you study leadership, it is taught that one of the most important qualities of a leader is integrity. Am I right on that? Beyond productivity, you can have a leader who is productive, but if that individual lacks integrity, it will affect his influence, it will affect his or her followership. The word integrity means, I wrote here, the quality of being honest. Integrity means the quality of being honest and showing a consistent and uncompromising adherence to strong moral and ethical values. Long definition, but I'll take it again. The quality of being honest, I'm defining integrity. And then it also means showing a consistent and uncompromising adherence. A consistent and uncompromising adherence to strong moral and ethical values. Showing consistent and uncompromising adherence to strong moral and ethical values. Integrity is the quality of truthfulness void of falsehood. The quality of truthfulness. It actually comes from the word integer. You learn that from mathematics. Same within as without. Void of falsehood. Are we learning now? So when we say God or an individual is a person of integrity, we expect the person to fit this definition that number one, you are a person of honesty and then number two, that you have an uncompromising and a consistent adherence to strong ethical and strong moral values. Now the question tonight very quickly is, is God that reliable? Is God that dependable? Am I at a risk if I take God's word for what it is? Will my destiny pay a dear price if I choose to live my life within the circumference of the word of God? If you do not understand this teaching, you will not understand the theme for this conference. Are we together now? Yeah. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Let's do a little investigation as to the integrity of God's word. The first thing the Bible has to tell us in honor to that concept of integrity is that God is not a man that you should lie. Jalingo, are you ready to say this? Say that after me. One, to go. God is not a man. Now, stop there. Don't, don't be in a hurry to assume you understand that statement. He would have just said, God does not lie. Why did he have to go through that route? That God is not a man that he should lie. That means you have to define by this reference what a lie means. A lie here is beyond an untrue statement. A lie is anything you say and you do not have the ability to bring it to pass. It's called a lie. With respect to this definition, it is not just saying something that is incorrect or saying something that is false. So the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. That means there is a weakness in all men. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. That we do not have in ourselves the ability to bring everything we say to pass. And it is not because we are false. It is because we are limited. Are we together now? So I can tell you that by tomorrow, I will give you something maybe some money and whilst i'm saying that i am also expecting that somebody will honor his word to allow me honor my own word 
if that person fails i don't have the power to correct the situation so i am a man and i have lied even though i'm not a bad man with respect to my word i fell short of it are you understanding now so when the bible says god is not a man it means there is a limitation found in all men that is not found in god it's a very profound information that the best of us no matter how good no matter how well intentioned circumstances beyond our control will make our world fall short eventually i can tell you i'm meeting you by 7 p.m and i mean so but the traffic can delay me now the traffic is beyond my control I, but i will come 7 45 with respect to that appointment i lied now it has nothing to do with having the nature of a liar but that i do not have the ability to tame the situations around me to insist that my word comes to pass god is not a man he became a man but he is not a man king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you you're the king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you so men lie and the bible shows us here that men lie for various reasons number one they lie because there is an inherent nature of falsehood within them. But number two, they lie because they are limited. So they say things that they do not have the wherewithal to bring to pass. Listen, this is very powerful. Don't forget our teaching tonight. We are examining whether it is a risk to depend on God. And so we are, this is an investigation into god's integrity is he reliable is god's word reliable can i run with his word is his word substance enough for me to place my life in hmm. and the first information i'm giving you in defense to god's integrity is that god is not a man that he should lie let's read on god is not a man that he should lie neither is he the son of man that he should repent the word repent there is withdraw from his statement because of weakness understand the context withdraw from his statement because of weakness that's what it means to repent contextually here that god is not a man that he should lie and there has never been a reason for god to say i am sorry the reason why I cannot do this is because I have searched that my ability is not up to the standard to make it happen. He says he cannot retract his word on account of that factor. Who is learning tonight? God is not a man. Do you know what that means? When you have this as a revelation, when God speaks, every time you want to doubt, you leave what he says and remember the person who spoke. Every time you doubt a man's word, the personality of that man can restore confidence to his word. If I tell you, meet me by 8 a.m. tomorrow, if you are in doubt of that word, the next thing you do is forget about what I said and go back to probe my personality. Do I have a track record that can defend such a statement? It is called integrity. Is someone learning now? So God is not a man. That he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent the bible says had he said and shall he not do it it's a question or had he spoken and shall he not make it good that means when god speaks his reputation goes with his word when god speaks he invests his reputation upon his word and that whoever believes that word is like a debt that god owes to pay on account of his reputation this is very powerful 
You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. So number one, God is not a man that you should lie. Sometimes people lie because of the intrinsic nature of falsehood that has not been dealt with within them. But sometimes they lie because they do not have the wherewithal caused by circumstances beyond their imagination. So lying is not an issue of being good or bad. There is lying that comes from a false nature. But there is lying that comes as a result of weakness. And the Bible says both limitations are not found in God. He is not false and he is not weak. Someone say amen. amen. Faith is rising in someone tonight. Because as you are hearing me teach, you are also hearing something God told you. That you have been doubting for years. And God is saying, thank you. I sent my son to challenge you. I won't change what I have said. It's up to you to believe me. If you don't believe me, it will look like I lied. But I have the power to bring what I have said to pass. Someone shout amen. Second scripture. Hmm. Psalm 89. We'll read 34. We read 34. But we're reading now to 37. We're investigating the integrity, the reliability of God's word, of God's speakings. Psalm 89, 34 down to 37. My covenant will I not break, nor alter, correct, adjust the thing that is gone out of my lips. Next verse, 35. Once have I sworn in my holiness that I will not lie to David. Next verse, reading to 37. His seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. Final scripture. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. God is saying, my covenant will I not break. David, my covenant will I not break. I will not adjust the thing that I've said about you. I have vowed that you will never lack someone to sit upon your throne and my power will defend that word at all cost. Integrity. 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 That God does not retract on his statement because of weakness. If someone is learning, say amen. amen. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 6. 16 to 18 Hebrews chapter 6 16 to 18 for men verily swear by the greater I wish we could you could give us amplified that means it is in the character of oaths the word swear there is a judicial term you need to be a legal practitioner to understand what Paul is saying here that it is consistent with men to make an oath in the presence of a witness who is greater for supervision and for compliance. You do not make an oath with people who are your contemporaries. No, you make an oath with someone who has the power to vet you and prosecute you if something goes wrong. If you falter on that word. Are we together? So here's what he's saying. Men indeed swear by a greater than themselves. He says, and with them in all disputes when an oath is taken for confirmation it is final it ends all strife that means if i am owing you say one million naira and i'm not able to pay if a lawyer comes or a judge the judge can say right an undertaking am i right on that that undertaking is called an oath that by september latest you will pay now because that judge in terms of judicial ranking is greater than all of us he has the power to summon us and even jail me for non-compliance so the presence of that judge or the court order puts a compulsion upon me 
whether I am a person of integrity or not, I am forced by the supervision of a power higher than me to bring my word to pass. So he's saying that is how the judicial system works. Now, when God made a promise to Abraham, because he knew the frailty of men's heart, he said a promise alone will not, this man's confidence will not be built on it. Let me go ahead to write an agreement, an oath. But to make that oath now demands that God will have to stand in the presence of someone higher than him who will make sure he does not fail. And not finding any, he was willing to humble himself if there was any God higher than him. Do you understand my teaching now? And since he did not find any, if there was a God higher than him, he was that humble to submit, to show man, Abraham, that I am this serious about my word. The Bible says, and finding none, he now swore by himself. Swore by himself. Swore by himself. Give us that scripture, please. Accordingly also, no, 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 please go back to verse 16. Men indeed swear by a greater and an oath of confirmation is the ending of strife. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, according God also, in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who will inherit the promise and the unchangeableness of his purposes and plan, he intervened he mediated by an oath next verse verse 18 this was so that by the promise backed up by an oath the bible says in kjv by these two immutable things it is impossible for god to lie do you know what that means when god makes a promise look at this if let me act out something so you understand this statement i can make a promise to a pastor that I will give you something. But I, because I did not make the promise in public, I can deny it. Because the promise is between me and one man. But when I write an oath, an oath is a paper that you write and sign. You can present it, you can put it online, you can take it anywhere. So although you were not there when I made the promise, the oath carries your signature and it still becomes binding. And because God spoke to Abraham, and spoke to him alone the bible says look unto abraham your father and sarah your mother i called him alone he did not call him with a crowd so how do we believe that abraham did not just cook up stories how do we believe that god was not just lying he still put an oath he said if you cannot believe in the promise believe in the oath but that by these two immutable things let it give you consolation over my character that it is important Impossible for God to lie. Impossible for God to lie. Let me tell you how what I said has applied to you now. Not everybody is going to have a vision of God telling you you will succeed. But if you don't have a vision, a promise, you can still go to the oath. It still stands. Are we together now? Not everybody will have a personal encounter with God like a supernatural encounter. The Bible says every time you don't have any encounter, make reference to the oath. It still stands by these two immutable things. It is impossible. That means I may never see a vision of an angel. I may never see a vision of anything, but I can hold on to the integrity of scripture and it can provide cover provide an excelling life as though I have lived in the realm of visions all my life. I may never receive a direct prophetic word addressing the unique situation in my life, but I can hold on to that which is written, the oath, and run my life with it and still succeed as if you spoke over me every day. That by the promise and the oath, it is impossible for God to lie.
Ninado kaka sunanka Ubangi chika isayabo Nagir mama sunanka Ubangi ji Listen You know what God is doing to you tonight? He's shaking away unbelief Every lie that the devil has brought around your life To make you believe God is not able to do it Are we together now? For some of you, you are saying, I cannot live my life because I've not had any dream. Other people have dreams and visions, but I don't have anything like that. You take your Bible. You may not find a unique promise, but there is an oath. And you see, the promise is usually in secret, but the oath is made public. It is open. Everything written here. The Bible says, the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning. So that we, through patience and the comfort of scripture, we might find hope. Is God that reliable? Number one, that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Number two, that God has made a statement himself that my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth. He said this about himself. Number three, that God went past the promise which was sufficient alone. But he went past the promise and he backed it up with an oath that by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. 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 Give us Genesis chapter 21. We'll read verse 1 and 2. Do we have any reference from scripture of God saying things and bringing what he said to pass? You see, because, please look up. One of the cardinal sponsors of integrity is a track record. Are we together now? When you want to employ a driver, say a driver to drive somebody you respect, Usually you would tell the person you must have at least five years experience. That means I must see who you drove before and if possible hear the recommendation that came from that person. Am I right? If the person you drove before says beware, this driver is a thief and he can kill you. Even if you can drive, something would have happened because of that poor um, what review upon you. Do you know the basis for promotion? In many, in many corporations, it's not just your qualification. It's a recommendation from those who know you and have worked with you. Am I right on that? People crave for recommendations. When you travel, especially to the West, people do a lot of things and they plead with you to quickly write a review. Please, send a good word that I treated you well as a customer care staff because their promotion depends on it. A track record. So when you are saying that God has integrity, aside from the things he said about himself, there must be the mystery of two or three witnesses that attest to the fact that God said it and he did it. If we cannot find in scripture what God said that came to pass, in spite of the evidence we have, we have a right to still pause and say, God, you are still a risk. I am not yet convinced that I can stake my life with you. In fact, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. The first manifestation of God's integrity as revealed in scripture. Genesis 1, let's start from verse 1. We're reading down to 4. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. Genesis we sing in honor of you. Lord, we raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Hallelujah. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, as recorded in scripture, is our first encounter with God, the spirit that speaks. Now, theologically speaking, there is what we call the law of first mention. Please look up. That when you are dealing with scripture, usually you go to the first place where that word, that 
thought that idea was used and that becomes your compass are we together now for examining that thought all through scripture so every time you want to deal with the speakings of god you would have to use the law of first mention go back to where he spoke first and this is what we want to see are you ready now the integrity of god's word genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth but if we stop here to be a vague statement how we created it we do not know the bible just summarizes it that creation happened are we together verse 2 now says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep then it says the spirit of god moved around the face of the waters it is still vague but when we get to verse 3 the first test of god's integrity because a man's word is a conveyor of his character his personality and his ability are we together verse 3 the first mention of god as a speaking spirit the bible says and god said mm. and god said forget about what he said now we know that he does not just create but that he creates by speaking so we have to vet what he said and see if it came to pass and god said so he speaks now we have a basis for judging his character if god did not speak there's no how to verify is the reason why idols are useless modes of worship because they do every other thing but speak anything that does not speak does not have the basis for testing its integrity if you want to know the difference between idols and the living god let me tell you it's not the form of fashion it's in the ability to speak because until you open your mouth you cannot give us an opportunity to test your integrity and god said and god created shows ability it can be faked it can be stage managed and the spirit hovered around the face of the earth is a visionary statement but when you say a man spoke you can hold that man by what he has said if i came for a program and you say apostle was there if there's no camera to capture me i can deny it even if i were there but if i am there and you give me the mic and i open my mouth even from a security standpoint provided i was there and i spoke my speaking more than my presence validated that i was there are we together now there are times you may not see the presence of a man but if you can capture his word and the sss can process it and say it's truly his voice they can prosecute that man that is how powerful your word is are you understanding my teaching tonight so the bible now says and god said the first statement he said was let there be light hmm. let there be light let there be light but the most powerful statement was the response here is integrity beyond power it is integrity and there was light let there be light and there was light so with this statement if he says joshua selman go forward i can go back to scripture and say what did he say before and did it happen if he now says go forward i expect the statement in my life to be and he went forward are we together now that when god speaks his word is not important there is integrity behind his speakings let there be light and there was light next verse and god saw the light that it was good and he divided the light from the darkness the next verse and god called the light by speaking again day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day go to verse 6 and god said now we see it again he's not afraid of saying again and god said and god said and we saw and god said and we saw 
and God said and we saw and God said and we saw now you go to Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 I want you to shout that scripture as loud as you can are you ready by the time we get to Genesis 21 he's still in the business of saying you would think after Genesis 1 he should have stopped but God is still saying every time he wants to help a man he starts by saying not doing because if he does not say doing cannot happen that is the protocol i told you about the law of first mention that he did not just start creation started by him saying and then it happened now look how he's dealing with abraham's situation here the bible says and the lord visited sarah help me as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken one more time and the lord visited sarah not as he is powerful as he and the lord did unto sarah as he had someone put your name there and the lord visited joshua selman as he had said and the lord did unto joshua selman as he had spoken listen to me the way to get God to do is not to ask him to do is to ask him to say because once he says it the protocol of his integrity mandates that a doing is what brings validation to the saying now you need to understand this that means if I look at your life ah, do we have time for this all right look up look up we're only introducing this let me not go ahead of myself please look up have you ever read a scripture called it is the lord's doing have you read that scripture he never said it is the lord's saying it is the lord's doing that means eventually if i come to your life i should be able to see the doing of the lord but if i ask you how did god do these great things if you just say he's powerful you did not answer well he starts with what he has said when you find what god has said you have also found what he will do not what he can do what he will do god can do all things but he will not do all things because he has not said all things listen carefully god can do all things but he will not do all things because he has not said all things he will only do what he has said i'm showing you how to get god's word to walk in your life oh god you are all powerful is there anything you cannot do unfortunately you will be disappointed god is it a land you cannot give me in jalingo you are that mighty no sir you will never see the doings of god till you trap what he has said the way to get his power is to use his word to direct where the power should go to because the power of God always follows his word you have a track record of keeping your word you're not about to stop doing it now he has a track record of keeping his word and he's not about to stop doing hallelujah the centurion meets jesus bishop and he says jesus looks at him about to go and help his daughter one of the synoptic accounts says jarius's daughter and whilst on his way going there a woman with the issue of blood interrupts him and he spends time dealing with her issue and when he's done dealing with her issue he says i will respect you because you are the equivalent of a captain in the army i will come to your house and he says no there is something i know about the economy of heaven you are a man under authority and because you are under authority it mandates that you have integrity and that integrity comes by you saying you say to one i am also a military man I understand how your economy works because I say unto one go and he goeth I say unto one come 
and he cometh. You too, you are under authority. So speak the word only. Do you know what he's saying? Your presence in my house still does not guarantee a miracle if your word is not there. Now, a lot of people are presence conscious. I'm not against that. But many people were in Jesus' crusade, but only those that had access to his word were healed. What gives value to God's presence is that that presence culminates to speaking. Listen carefully. Most believers do not understand the power of God's word. The centurion said, your presence without your word will still leave my child dead. Speak the word only. If I cannot capture your presence because of your, your, your schedules, send your word. Send your word. Send your word send your word and jesus looked at him and said i've not found such faith who taught you this who gave you this education that the power of a man follows his word if you're a man of integrity are we learning now the bible says that self same hour that self same hour the child was resuscitated god did unto sarah as he has spoken he visited sarah as he has said he visited sarah not as she wanted god will not visit your ministry as you have cried no he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he's only moved by his word he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity many believers whip up sentiments in their work with god and they think because of the abundance of the emotion that is invested in their discussion with god it automatically translates to a miracle there is an economy that god runs and he's bound himself by the protocol of that economy that not even him will violate that order are we together now do you know why jesus resurrected it was not because three days had passed it was not because he was done defeating satan it's because before he died he sent a word to be waiting he said destroy this temple after three days i will raise it back let me tell you if jesus died without speaking he would have remained in hades i hope you know that the boundary between the realm of the spirit and the earth the conversation that happened there were words lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ye ancient doors that the king of glory might come in the gates ask a question who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle and the gates open and he came triumphantly jesus himself spoke jesus himself spoke jesus himself spoke there is integrity in god's word now this is not a pastor's conference but let me tell you with all due respect ministers of the gospel co-laborers do you know why it looks like god's word does not work because most people have not come to a point of honoring the supremacy of god's word with the simplicity of childlike faith we are obsessed with the fact that god is almighty and you are right but we have not narrowed down to the administrative system of his power god can do all things but he will not do all things he will only do that which is consistent with his speakings so asking the power of god to do everything you want is immaturity the power of god only does what is consistent you see that the word of god becomes the boundary for the administration of god's power god's power does not work arbitrarily because it is limitless the power of god submits to the boundary created by scripture are we together now that means for you to see god's power at work in your life and your ministry if you cannot find a promise go to the oath and find where god has said it so the bible says bring forth your strong reasons god you said you will lift me where did you find that nations run by constitutions and constitutions don't have sentiments are we together now when you quote a constitution this this and this article this immediately you can even challenge a verdict by the constitution
this right here is the reason why many believers are unable to experience the power of God we are conscious of the presence of God and that is mighty we are conscious of the power of God and that is wonderful but most people have not learned even those who talk about the word of God have not taken the time to examine how the word of God works they just know the word of God is powerful they've heard preachers say the word of God works but why it works and how it works they do not know so when he speaks as his covenant to Noah and says never again will the earth be destroyed that statement will sound blind to your ears until you leave the statement and go and investigate the integrity of God's word because if you believe that one then you can believe God that he can heal you of cancer then you can believe God it's the same principle when God looks at you and says by December you will be laughing you will not look at the variables your focus will not be on the variables the focus will be on the integrity of the one who has spoken is someone learning now God has spoken great things concerning believers but they are unable to see the manifestation in their lives the reason is simply because they do not know listen carefully they do not know that God's power I will repeat this for your hearing tonight God is almighty he is El Shaddai he is all powerful he can do all things but he will not do all things he will only do what is consistent with his word apostle I know God will lift me show me where he has said it if you cannot show me where he has said it I don't need to be a prophet of doom you will hold that that thought for the rest of your life and it will never come to pass even if Satan is not in existence it won't come to pass because the basis for administering God's power is not even there you attract what God can do by finding what he has said when Jesus walked upon the earth bishop the first thing Jesus did was not to look for power from age 12 he went to the temple learning the things that were written listen carefully and then and then and then in Luke I believe from verse 4 the Bible says he went to the temple as his custom was and they open up to him the scroll of Isaiah the prophet. Are we, are we there? And he read the Messianic prophecy. That was Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. The Bible puts it beautifully. He found there written, the things written concerning him. Just because they were written does not mean it will come to pass. Luke chapter 4 from verse 16, 17, 18 that he found where it was written concerning him the spirit of the lord is upon me he says yes he stood up for to read the spirit of the lord is upon me watch this now because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised next verse to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I like the next verse, verse 20. The Bible says he closed the book, gave it to the minister. All eyes were fastened upon him, 21. And then, next verse please. He began to say to them, now that you have seen what God has said, be ready to see it come to pass. Do you know that even though prophetically it had been written, it was never going to come to pass until Jesus himself found it. Is it not in your Bible? Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written concerning me. I came to do your will, but I must find where he said it so that the power that drives my doing that will be released. The Holy Ghost never came upon Jesus until he paid attention to the ministry of the word what God says concerning you matters what he tells you personally but what is written here heaven and earth will pass away Jalingo, please hear me 
when you see any man rise by the spirit it's not because god decided to isolate others and honor others at the detriment of others uh -uh. the destiny of rising and excelling is the destiny of all believers deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass the bible says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to do and to observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you the name of an individual was not written there even though it was to abraham but it was to abraham and his seed the seed being christ extending to all who are in christ because the bible says in galatians 3 29 and if ye be christ then are ye heirs according to the promise are we learning now i know my life will work i know my life will work based on what abba is it you keep watching no sir it doesn't work that way you can cry all you want sincerely you can wish yourself good but if you want to see the power of god in your life look up please so for instance there are people here who are sick there are people here that the holy ghost brought them here to receive impartations how many of you believe that there are people god sent here to end certain circles over your family but how come as you enter the church what god had in store for you did not happen god is always there where two or three are gathered but his power only moves when his word moves that is the reason why it is at the instance of god's word that the works of god begins to be made manifest What is the basis of your prospering? I think I have good relatives who will help me. You are making a mistake. No. You need to go and find the things that have been spoken concerning you, the Zion of God. Until you find that, that becomes the basis. That becomes a trigger for God's power. If you see someone who is sick, what is the basis of the person being healed? I'm an anointed man. You've made a mistake already. It is true that you are anointed, but you'll be surprised how disappointed you will be in the presence of that person. The reason why the person is, is healed is not just because of the anointing, it's because the anointing is ready to flow in honor to the word. 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 It is the presence of the word of God in a man of God's life that makes that man great. Is someone hearing? Are you learning now? So if the power of God begins to fall upon this place and God begins to visit people and change their stories. It will not just happen because an anointed man came. It will not just happen because anointed men are there. It will not even just happen because God is there whether you go back with your condition he was still there but whether or not you will see his power depends on his word there were 12 disciples in the boat are we bible students and the bible says when jesus was walking upon the water they saw him and thought he was a ghost and peter looked at him watch this now how many of you know that all 12 based on the word of god would have the ability to walk on water now they saw jesus so there was proximity it was not a presence problem his presence was there close to them enough to talk and get a response you don't stand afar off and talk and the person will hear you must be close enough and peter said if it be thou your presence is there but i cannot see your power until you give me a word if it be thou bid me come notice he never said peter come he said come anybody anybody who stood if he said peter come and james came it will be disobedience to james because a name was mentioned when he was bringing the dead out he mentioned one man lazarus if he just said come forth that would be rapture immediately because every dead man will come up so he picked the name of the person who must come out are we together now lazarus he said you are the only one that word entered the realm of the spirit and although i hope you know that those who were at abraham's bosom who later resurrected it's in your bible they had the potential to be resurrected by that same word but the word was with a specific instruction 
if I call Bishop's number, not even his wife's phone will ring. As close as they are, the word of God is quick, is powerful, is precise. You don't assume the word of healing for prosperity. It doesn't work that way. I don't call Bishop and his wife's phone will answer. No, not normal, except if they program it that way. If it be thou, your presence is already there. And with your presence, your power is there. But the person who will experience your power is not the one who saw your presence. It's the one who receives and acts upon your word. It says, if it be thou, bid me come. And only Peter, Peter said, I will take that risk. I have heard his word. Call me a madman. I will build that church. I have heard his word. I know God said, come to Taraba and establish a ministry. You may not understand, but I know the vision I saw. In addition to the vision, I have found scripture that whatsoever he doeth prospers. This is my first external ministration on returning from the US and Canada. When, since we came back, this is my first ministration. And to God be the glory for the great things that he did. But let me tell you, I am not telling you stories and I'm not telling you cunningly devised fables. By the privilege of God's mercies, the things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life this is not theory God's power will turn you to a sign and a wonder if you respect his word if you respect his power you will look like a herbalist forever hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching